Just thinking there's a billion population, that's a sixth of the entire world population, is overwhelming to think about. A first time visit to India, it rocks your senses on every level. But then you look at the poverty, um, the suffering, the abuse, the caste system, the um, spiritual worship of idols and foreign deities is, um, is something that as a Westerner we have no point of reference to be able to compare that with. And so it's fairly shocking to us. And I think the first thing that hits you is the visible disparities and the horror. To us it's a horror. And so we want to go in and address those physical needs because that's what we see. And we start talking about how can we feed the poor? How can we help the hungry? How do we free the abused? But what uh, we're coming to learn and understand along with many others is that these problems are only symptoms of something much deeper. They're symptoms of spiritual darkness. continues to be hard for us to accept or even understand is the depth of pain and suffering that women in India are experiencing and uh, everywhere we go we're, we're realizing that it's a national, a national problem that women feel like second-class citizens. They said that women is made for just house servant, like a servant and a slave. And she has to do all the work, whatever is required. If she doesn't do any work, she must get a beating. Unless and until she is not getting any beating or abuse men, she will not understand. Many of the women, they identify themselves to what people usually call them, you know. Because women, uh, when they are called, they are said that you are not beautiful, you know, you are good for nothing, uh, you, will, you, are not able to, you will not be able to do this, you, know, you are not worthy. And we found that women were so abused and so hurt and so lost. So many of them uh, had no solutions to their problems. So that was a big burden that I came across. Uh, generally, the Hindu culture in, uh, in India, it, it doesn't give an equal priority to women. Where men have the, the final word, uh, and uh, most of the decisions are taken by men and uh, though women come up with a good decisions uh, they may not be taken or well considered and if she raise her voice if she do something for herself then they beat her means that she doesn't have any freedom if she wants to have freedom that then the husband will beat her and sometimes small, small reasons also, like even I have found some of the families for sex also. Husband will beat her. Means he will not understand the women mentally is not ready. She, she's not feeling well. Uh, she's not prepared. But he just think about himself. Different hurts, like they are looked down upon. Women are not giving any priority, especially in the ministry also. Uh, even in the churches. Uh, ministry, they are not released. Um, even if they have the heart uh, to do the ministry and serve God, but then uh, husbands or even their mother or father, their parents, they oppose them. The husband, uh, he gets very upset when he, when this, when he comes to know that this, uh, his wife is going to a prayer meeting or he gets upset. So many women wanted to be released and come out of the oppression and they want to be free and they want to know the Lord. They want to know the reality. But if you take one woman at a time, make friends with her, sit down with her, 
you know then you know that along the line you can show her that there is help available in the form of Jesus well we've just finished a week in Pune uh, meeting with women leaders there and uh, training butterfly trainers for follow-up ministry and leadership we've had a wonderful time um, where we had a two-day training with 80 women uh, teaching them the process of transformation and finding their identity in Christ and how to share that with others. As the Lord has blessed me, I know that I've seen that there are so many women in the world, those who are in bondage, those who are abused, those who are hurt, those who are having the pain. I want to go out to them, I want to tell them because unless and until they know Jesus, they won't have freedom. So I thought that it is, a, it is my ministry that I go out to them and reach out to them with the love of Christ and share Jesus to them. So I thought this training is very useful for me and I wanted to come and attend this and learn how to reach out to them, how to learn, uh, how to counsel them and talk to them, bring back those young girls to the Lord and share them the love of Christ. Now they're realizing that they were like caterpillar because Jesus was not there. But after receiving Jesus, they understand their value in Christ. You know, why God has created women and what was the purpose and what kind of women has to be. When they understand Christ, when they accept Christ, they see their beauty, they see their strength. And that's why they, they feel that we are like butterfly, means free, free in Christ and beauty. Yeah, my personal experience that the, the biggest change is that God has given a smile on my face and inner peace, inner peace that I have. It's very exciting. I'm just waiting for that program. Very exciting. Uh, I, I feel that it is a great achievement for me. You know, like the women with whom I'm ministering, they will come to that program. Uh, previously, they were just hearing to me, know about my testimony. But now they will hear about other women, what kind of experience that they have gone through and how God helped them and how God blessed them. And that program will be a, a very much blessing to them. And that's why I'm very excited for this program. Thank God that uh, 50 ladies who attended this conference and many were touched. I think all of them were touched. Uh, and uh, they felt that they were in a cocoon stage. All, they, all of them, they came in that stage, caterpillars. Um, you know, all they were so much closed. Uh, they neither knew one another also. But uh, after two days, we could see that they all opened up themselves. And so when we talked about uh, butterfly, so that just uh, you know, that led them up and you know, to receive that freedom in Christ. Uh, we know that uh, our identity is not based what, on what people say, but now we realize that in Christ we have an identity and we are secured in Him. We are secured in His love. We together need your prayers. Just as Nehemiah had the builders on the wall uh, with a personal prayer warrior covering them, then we are asking you, please cover the women of India. God is doing an amazing work and uh, they can't do it without the prayer of their sisters and brothers across the seas. God is at work, God is moving, there's a lot more work to be done. I need others to come with me. I need women who will come on board as prayer partners, who will step up to the plate and say, I'll pray for one woman every single day. I need financial partners who will get involved by saying, I can't come, but I'll give. I will put my resources and invest in the kingdom of heaven right here and now to help Love Unveiled, and we'll do it together. I need you now, whatever God has spoken to you about through what you've heard me sharing today, I would seriously ask you to consider what part do you have to play in rebuilding God's kingdom in the lives of broken women. Mm -hmm.